Hello and welcome to Getter Farms. We're back with another episode of the Flint Hills map by JS Mapping. And uh, last time we finished up our soybean harvest and now we're getting all set up to uh, kick off corn harvest here. If we take a quick look at the map here, we can see on precision farming here, our total yield on this field. Uh, unfortunately, this is in liters, but we've got 1.14 million liters of uh, soybeans that we harvested out of this field, which is quite impressive. I'm not sure how they're calculating the total value of that crop, but if we just take their calculations at face value, we've made uh, just under 600,000 in profits. Um, I have noticed there's a couple of small errors with this in that it doesn't track herbicide at all uh, in these economic values. And so I know we spent a fair amount of money spraying this field. So that's something we'll have to take into consideration in the future. However, uh, it's really cool to kind of see these numbers start coming together. And I'll be curious to compare this when we actually go to sell the crops and see how much money we make on our soybeans later in the year. If we also take a look at the nitrogen map here, we can see, and I think we talked about this last time, that... Uh, the entire state of this field has improved by one state of nitrogen from where it was before, which is just a result of planting soybeans and the fact that the soybeans actually added a little bit of nitrogen back into the soil. And then if we look at the pH map, you can see here, if you look closely, it's a shade darker across the board than the surrounding fields. Uh, and that's also an impact of planting a crop and then harvesting it. There's a small drain on the pH value. And so we're going to actually start spreading some lime on our fields this fall and try to get this pH value up and see what effect that has on our yield for the following year. And the interesting thing with pH versus uh, nitrogen is the pH values are going to be based on the soil type. And so each soil type has a different target pH level versus when we look at nitrogen, the nitrogen value that you want on your field is based on what crop you've planted in the field. And so this is kind of a cool dynamic where you're targeting different values based on soil type for the lime and nitrogen based on the crop type. So with that, we've got our lime spreader over here, our handy dandy uh, 4940 from Custom Modding. And we are going to be leveraging coarse play to spread lime on this field because it is absolutely ginormous. Um, now, this has got a pretty wide working width, so I think we're going to be able to handle one headland pass. And we won't need to do any skip rows. And it's generated a cool east-west path this time. So um, we were talking about trying that out in the uh, previous video. So um, we're going to go ahead and go with this. And I don't think our lime is going to go very far uh, because the pH value on the soil is so low. So we're going to get this guy started out here but I suspect that we're going to find he is going to use just an absolutely large amount of lime. And uh, if that is the case, which I can already tell it is as we drop 3% before we've even made it a few feet, I think that what we're going to do is go ahead and turn on the option for the helper to buy fertilizer. Um, so that he can keep going because if we take a quick look here at the bottom of course play This is already going to take over two hours for him to lime this field Even if he's not making trips to go get lime We could set up a refill course and have him drive into town to get lime Or we could have the semi go do get some lime and bring it back and reload on the edge of the field But that's going to make this two hour job likely turn into a four hour job so I'm going to go with a little bit easier uh, mode here, and to be quite frank, it's uh, going to cost us a little bit more money, uh, but that's okay. I'm, uh, I'm okay with spending a little bit of money in order to save ourselves some hassle here. And I'm going to stop the driver real quick because I'm noticing we're low on fuel. And so as long as I'm sitting here right next to the uh, fuel refill point, we're going to fill up the fuel on this guy. Um, I'm going to hope that I've got some fuel left in this trailer here so I don't have to actually spend any more money. We're running pretty low. Uh, looks like we are out of fuel. I filled up the combines when I brought everything back up to the yard and washed them off. So our combines are filled up and ready to go. Uh, we're going to fill up the 4940 here at the tank for the rest of the way and then uh, get him going back on this course. So with the 4940 out spreading lime, 
we're going to go ahead and get these combines set up in this lower field and start harvesting some corn. Now, this is, um, for the most part, a fairly straightforward field, but we do have that farm down there in the lower section that uh, has caused some problems with uh, other courses on the previous field. So we're going to try and see what options we have to mitigate that. This is a nice little course. Looks like it's going to behave itself around this farm for the most part. So I see no reason not to accept that course. We're going to turn on our start point so we can see where to go. We're going to set this guy up to start on the left side. We're going to make sure we have fill level priority set and we have a uh, vehicle convoy mode set. And then we're going to just go ahead and take a little bit of this uh, extra headland bits out here. We're going to use pathfinding in turns. We're going to let him back up in turns. We're going to turn off the straw discharge because there is corn uh, stock straw turned on in this map. And then we're going to tell him to start at the first waypoint. With this guy on his way, we're going to grab the other combine. One of the nice things about having our fields all right next to the farm is we don't have to worry about getting a header trailer. I am going to take this corner off because it's going to annoy me if I have to keep driving over it. And uh, we'll just take a little bit extra out here so that I can get turned around and get started on this course. So with both of the combines on their way, we've got to go grab a grain cart. Now, corn is pretty high healed, so our first combine is already full, and he's only made it down the... Headland, the first headland pass and halfway down the field over there so we are definitely gonna have a lot of corn on our hands so let's take a quick look at our grain silo complex as you can see we really used up a lot of our capacity with soybeans again about 1.1 million in soybeans and so i'm really worried that we're not going to have the capacity to store all of our corn in these bins uh, because while we have less total acres of corn, the uh, corn volume is quite a bit higher, I suspect. In fact, let's just jump into this guy and see what we're yielding. We're yielding at about 187 bushels an acre, which is um, not as high as I've seen in, in uh, farm sim, but uh, it's a lot of corn. And if we had been able to lime this field as well. I think that uh, our yields would have been even higher than what we're seeing right now, uh, obviously. So I'm kind of curious to see what this field will do next year as we put more on it. And if I'm not mistaken, the um, ground type down here is just not optimal either. If we look at the precision farming map, switch this over to ground type. We are in the silty clay over here, which is not a, a great ground type. And so if we look at field 25 here, where we have a lot of this loam style sand um, or style uh, soil, we're going to see a lot better yield in that soil. So um, we're going to get some pretty high yield areas in some of these fields and see uh, how fast we fill up our bins is going to be really interesting. I just want to get the fields opened up here. I don't think we're going to be able to keep up with the combines while we're getting the truck courses set up and such. Uh, but I need a little bit of room to be able to set up the grain cart course. So I think that the best thing for us to do is to kind of run this uh, manually ourselves right now and just get uh, everything opened up, see if I can get far enough away from this auger without going completely into the ditch here. Just to unload enough, hopefully he can get around this farm now, and then uh, we'll catch him right on the other side here. This is uh, quite the ditch though. I'm uh, a little nervous about getting stuck over here. All right, so that ditch was too steep for us to unload in. So we're catching up with him around the curve here. We're gonna unload uh, this front guy, let him kind of get going. And then I gotta jump back there and get the other guy unloaded. And then we'll go get the uh, semis over here and unload them. Uh, we're just a little close. I feel like I should probably set those augers tipped down a little bit before I start the course play course just to uh, make our lives a little bit easier. But uh, he looks about empty, so I'm going to jump back here, unload our second combine because he's got to be getting about full, and then uh, we'll get to setting up the rest of these courses. We don't have a ton of room over here, but uh, we should have enough to 
I think just park the semi on the road and have the grain cart fill alongside. And so I think what I want to do is start the semi off coming into a start point like so. And we're going to just start course recording and have him kind of come down away from where the grain cart is and do his U-turn here. And then head on back up to the grain bins. And then as we head back out to the field, we're going to just uh, try to line right back up over here in such a way that hopefully if I get a second truck on this same course, we're going to be able to have them both be out of the way of each other so that as the first truck uh, goes to unload, the second truck can pull through here. And so we've got the drive on at 100% set, so he should wait till he's completely filled. And he should stop with the center of the trailer right under that start point. So with that set up, let's try and get this grain cart course set up. And we always set the semi and the grain cart course up facing opposite directions so that uh, they don't run into each other once they're trying to pull away from the course. And so I'm going to have this guy start right here coming in. And we're just going to gradually come up alongside this semi because we don't want to get stuck in traffic with him. I'm going to put my weight point right here. And uh, just because I want to get this uh, grain going here, I'm going to let him fill up. And then I'm going to pull forward a smidge. Set my second waypoint. And then he's full. He's going to pull away. And then I'm going to set my stop point right here. Then hopefully he's got enough room to uh, turn around depending on where he needs to go. I'm going to go ahead and tell this guy to... Whoops. Stop driver, find combines, and we'll put him at first waypoint. And he's going to be set up to drive on as long as he's got 50% uh, of his capacity. So that way he's not sitting around waiting for the truck to come back. Uh, if he's got enough to go unload somebody, he's going to. All right, we've got this guy going again after some shenanigans. Hopefully that's not going to be a problem with that fence every time. Just that little weird corner spot. So let's get back out here and uh, see what's going on with the uh, course play courses here. It looks like our semi got back successfully and is waiting for some more corn. And I can see that our grain cart is down here unloading another semi. And so we're another semi unloading another combine. So we're doing good here. Both combines are moving. It looks like that one in the back is about to get full again, but that's okay. We will uh, hopefully be able to turn around here and go grab him in a second. This front combine is uh, emptied out. So let's see. Let's see how well this guy's going to do. We got just enough room to make the U-turn, which is good for us. Looks like the rear combine is just getting full now. He's probably going to have to stop by the time we turn around. But at least uh, we're right here and ready to go. So our downtime is going to be pretty minimized. He might be uh, stuck in traffic a little bit here. But he's uh, going to get it figured out. So course play has really been uh, starting to act well for me. Uh, we haven't had too many problems. I really want to see uh, how this course is going to go with him trying to unload here. Usually I've got to fine tune the grain cart course the first time. So we'll be uh, following along and checking that out here real quick. So it looks like we've got our first full grain cart load here. So we're going to 
head back to the course here and see how well this is going to work out for the um, unloading into this truck. We may have to make a little bit of adjustments here on our weight points. We're going to find out here momentarily. We usually need to drag them back a bit from where we initially set them. So we're way overshooting things here. So we're going to go ahead and just stop driver real quick, back him up a smidge, and then uh, edit these points real quick. So I've gone ahead and started both trucks on this course just out of curiosity of how well course play is going to handle having two semis on the same course. I expect that they're just going to wait in line here for each other. It looks like that is the case. I'm going to get an in traffic warning uh, while that's happening. So at some point I'll have to go into course play and disable that annoying message as well. This guy is nearly full. And so he's coming back to unload. We haven't quite gotten his uh, unload course dialed in for some reason. I might be just a smidge far away. And so I wanted to watch this one more time and uh, hopefully it's gonna go off without a hitch. And so this unload point is in a pretty much perfect spot. He's gonna dump into this front really nice and fast. The guy behind him is getting a little antsy and we didn't pull forward far enough to dump the second time. I don't understand what's going on here, so we're going to stop driver. We'll make one more adjustment to this, try and pull him forward a few feet. And tell this guy to just start going again. He's probably going to run back out here and try to unload another combine real quick. So I'm thinking I'm actually going to take over and drive the grain cart in this uh, field. We seem to be having some problems today, so... I'd rather get this field knocked out than continue to dink around with course play. And uh, honestly, it's been a bit since we drove the grain cart ourselves anyway, so we're going to have a little bit of fun and see what we can do to keep up with these combines. I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, half full semi move in. And then uh, we'll come back and get the rest of these combines empty. I think the lead combine's already going to be full here momentarily. So I'm going to get rid of uh, this course play course. And we're just going to go, go, go. We should have enough to actually dump both of these semis. Or fill both of these semis with this uh, load. So and there we go. All right, now let's get our button gear and get these combines moving. We could probably use a little bit faster of a tractor on the grain cart at some point, but uh, this is what we got, so it's going to have to do. All right, we've got these combines moving and grooving. We do not need course play. We've got everything under control. This rear combine is all emptied out. we got to catch back up with this guy in the lead here real quick. And then I think the goal is going to be Pretty much every time we're down on this north end of the field, we'll run back up and get a semi going. Because we are uh, cranking in the corn. I'm not sure I'm going to catch this guy before he has to stop, unfortunately. I'd really like him to keep going. Don't stop. I'm right here. Keep going. We made it. We made it. And so, yeah, we've already got enough for one full semi right now. So I think that's going to be the goal, is to just keep uh, keep dumping. Every time we get to uh, the north end of the field, we'll run down and dump another truck. And uh, I don't know that we'll be able to keep up with both combines at this rate, but uh, hopefully we'll get to a point where we're at least keeping them moving to some degree. I should have stopped and unloaded that guy all the way before uh, letting him turn around there, but... Uh, We'll get that set up a little bit better next round, I guess. And we're just uh, moving and grooving to get down to uh, get to these combines, get to these semis. Back and forth, back and forth. Grain cart driver is always feeling the pressure. Now, I did shut course play off on the back semi just because I was tired of seeing the message. I'll have to get him started again. And we should be able to just say drive course he's gonna wait in traffic here this guy is being a mite impatient there 
And then we gotta get boogieing because I'm pretty sure the combine is uh, about to stop. Can't see the flashers from here, but you know he's gotta be getting full. If our uh, grain cart was just a little bit faster, I think we would have been able to keep up with these two. Something to consider for next season is to uh, get a better grain cart set up. Something a little faster, maybe even a smaller grain cart. I don't know that we necessarily need something quite this big. As long as it's bigger than one full semi, I think we'd be in a good spot. I think we are going to stop on the end row here and make sure we let the combine finish emptying into us. Get him completely emptied and then go catch up with the other guy. I think uh, this is going to let us get into a much better routine here once we, uh, we're always unloading on the way back up towards the north end there with the lead combine also we do not appear to need both trucks so maybe i will uh disable one of those trucks here when we get back up there since we already put some corn in that front truck i think we've got just enough to fill him up so we're gonna go up here and uh, make the attempt to fill him up and get this other semi out of the rotation since uh, one truck is more than enough to keep up with us on this field since we're so close to the farm um, I think where we're going to want two trucks will be when we jump into this field just north of us and we have the long rows, we'll be able to park a truck on each end of this field. So we're going to just stop this truck and move him out of our way without crashing into the fence. I think what we'll do is we'll just leave him here. And uh, that way, if we find that we need a truck for some reason, we've got one sitting here to empty into. And it looks like he's already on his way back up to the bins, so we're going to go, 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 and see if we can uh, catch up with these two combines on the way uh, back down for the rear run and the way back up for the guy in the lead. And then uh, we should have another semi full by the time we get back down to the north end. So I think we've got this down to uh, a perfect rotation here. Once again, proving that we've got just the right setup. We're going to jump back down here and uh, pick up the second combine again a little bit. We're not quite full. Or uh, we don't have enough for a full semi, I should say. But uh, now we do. So now we can finish unloading him, jet back over, and... Uh, keep things rocking and rolling this is uh this is working out very nicely we are on our last land section it looks like and so we've got uh we're cutting through the middle there and these guys are gonna wrap up this field as they go around these last uh three passes or so and i think that's a great start to corn harvest for us i'm uh super curious to see how much we've actually brought in so far i've kind of lost track as we've been kind of putzing around with course play and getting different things going. I've also not been paying attention to the fact that our lime spreader is putting us into the poorhouse. We are at negative $60,000. We're going to have to go square up with the bank here shortly. Let's take a quick look at the precision farming map. See that we're about halfway done from a turning around perspective. We've got this short rows done. We'll be hitting these long rows, so he should be a little bit more efficient spreading through the long rows, at least from a time perspective. And so we're going to be getting pretty close here to wrapping up the lime spreading probably around the same time that we've got this field wrapped up and we've got set up and moved on to the next one. So that's exciting that we're knocking that out i'd really like to um, get some tillage started over on this field at some point here too so we need to get the lime spreader switched out and moved over to this cornfield so we can put some lime down before we start doing tillage we won't need to do tillage on the bean ground but we do need to hit um, our three cornfields with tillage after we get them harvested so we're gonna put the lime down first uh, before we try to tackle tillage i think this uh, lead combine should be getting about full here as he comes up to the end. So we're going to try and uh, sneak in here. I see he's got his flashers on already. And so if I can just catch him before the end, 
we can get him unloaded before he tries to head back down. And then uh, with the lead combine empty, let's see if we can zip down here and unload our rear combine on the go and uh, keep things moving a little bit efficiently here. We've got two rounds left with the, the combines here. Or one round a piece, I guess I should say. So we're nearly on our final round. I should actually be able to fit most of this into uh, this grain cart, but given that we're at, oh, let's see in cab here, 500 bushels right now, we can uh, fit a little bit more in here. So we might just hang out here and uh, try to finish unloading these combines before we head back up and uh, fill the truck. Don't see any point in uh, needing to run back and forth. If we've got the capacity, we're going to just head down to the end here, I think, and set ourselves up to catch that lead combine on his uh, drive back up to the north headland. I don't think we'll catch him before he gets to the end of the field here. Maybe we will, maybe we won't, but it's hard to tell sometimes. All right, so we are at the end of the course. So we're gonna go ahead and stop this driver. He is empty. We're gonna put his pipe away and park him just out of the way here. And then we're gonna jump back in here and go see about catching this. Oops, I turned him off. Go catching this other combine before he gets to the end here. And that is our first field harvested. Minus the little bits that course play always hates picking up. And so we're gonna just finish emptying this guy. We'll go get this dumped into the bins. And then we will uh, check out and see how we did for our first cornfield of harvest. All right, we've got the last little bit of corn here from uh, our field. Bringing it up into the bins now. And I've come to the realization we didn't buy propane. So we're going to pay down all of this debt now. And we're going to go control G, open overview, corn dryer. Oh, we do have propane. So if we're drying our corn. We've got 304 bushels, 304,000 liters of wet corn. And we've managed to dry 17,000 liters of it so far. So this is going to go pretty slow, uh, which is fine. Uh, but we are pretty low on propane. And so I think what we're going to do is buy, uh, that's a lot of dollars of propane. We're going to buy $10,000 of propane. And uh, hopefully that's going to keep this uh, grain dryer running for a little while here. And uh, yeah, so popping back in there, 320,000 liters of corn so far off of that field. If we look at the precision farming screen here, it's telling us that we are only going to make about 50 grand off of uh, field 26. And uh, that doesn't take into account the herbicide costs that we had. So honestly, that's pretty low. Um, but, you know, it is a profit. If we take a look at this screen here, uh, you can see it, it was a decent yield potential field. And so I think it's just the fact that we had not put down the lime probably hurt our yield somewhat because this field is uh, several levels behind on uh, lime. So you can see over here, though, as we start liming this field, that the contours are matching up with the soil types, um, which is pretty cool. So I'm really looking forward to comparing the yields that we've gotten this year with uh, next year's yields and seeing how that kind of improves over time. So with that, I think this is a good spot to wrap up today's episode. And uh, next time, we're going to be jumping into uh, knocking out these other two fields of corn. That's all for today. Kedrick, out. <laughs>